I'm Jenny Fish with One Big Happy Yarn Company and welcome back to our Santa and Elf Hat Knit Along. I'm so excited to continue showing you how to make these adorable Santa and Elf hats. Okay, so in the last episode, we went ahead and cast on. We worked the loopy stitch to show you that and then I talked about how to do the decrease to get back to the body of the hat. Now, if you're working the Santa hat, you're just gonna work in red for the rest of the way and till you get to the end. If you are working on the elf hat, I want to show you these stripes. These are four round repeats of the stripes. Now, when you're working in the round, you are working in a spiral. So what happens as you go along, you will get what's called a jog. And I'm gonna, I made a little sample, little tiny sample here um, to give you an idea of what a jog looks like. So see here, this is where my red stops, my white starts for the next round, white stops, red starts. This is called a jog where it jumps from here to here. There are some techniques out there to eliminate that jog or to minimize that jog. It's really kind of hard to eliminate it because of the nature of the fabric and you are knitting in a spiral. So we'll minimize it, we'll say that. So up here I've done a few rounds with this technique that I'm gonna show you. And you, it's worked with what's called an elongated stitch. So there's three stitches here versus the four stitches here. There is a little bit of dip here because this is where I first started it. So on your hat when you first start it, there might be one little dip, but as you can see, the next round looks almost perfectly even. The next round, almost perfectly even. So let me show you how I did that. So first, let's get a little of this cleaned up. Let's put the elf hat back here. Isn't he cute? Move that over there. Okay, so now you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my four rounds of red and I'm gonna start with my white. First round, you just go ahead and knit. Now. Keep in mind, as you can tell, obviously I'm working on a small sample here and you'll be working on your hat, but here is the philosophy. You knit one whole round with the new color. Let me go ahead and knit that real quick. And you'll be on a shorter circular needle, so you can just go around and around and around. Don't forget to put your beginning of the round marker on there so you'll know where you'll be changing out your color. Okay, so I've finished the first round of the white. On the second round, I'm gonna go ahead and slip this first stitch and then start knitting on the second stitch. I'll go ahead and continue knitting around for three more rounds so that I have a total of four rounds of white. Now what I've done by slipping that first stitch is caused a little shift in the fabric and that helps minimize the jog at uh, where the color changes. And then you just continue that same thing every time. What it does is now in that one line, you're gonna have three stitches instead of four, but one of those three stitches is an elongated stitch and that kind of shifts it. So that's the theory behind the um, two color jogless stripes. You'll go ahead and continue on. When your hat is ready for the decreases, then I will show you the kind of decreases. Before you start, and the pattern will tell you when, but before you start your decreases, you wanna go ahead and place your stitch markers. And it'll tell you where, but you just knit along and you place a stitch marker after so many stitches. And that's just as simple as you knit, and then you put your stitch marker in. We've all done that before. But what that does, you'll have several stitch markers around your hat. It kind of keys your brain into, when I get to the stitch marker, now I'm gonna be doing a decrease. And that is these right here. So we have one, two, three, four. So you have four decreases. So you just knit until you get to your stitch marker and then you work your decreases. So the decrease that we'll be using is a knit two together. So let me show you. I've Go ahead, put my stitch marker in there. You'll, um, let me back up here. Now you'll be on your second round where you come to your stitch marker and it's a simple knit two together. You guys, we've done this before. You put your needle through two stitches, knit those two stitches together. You'll see SM 
in your pattern, and that means slide marker. That's as simple as moving it from one needle to the other. Then you knit to your next marker, knit those two together. You'll have that decrease round, and then your pattern will tell you how many regular rounds where you just knit all the stitches, then you do your decrease round all the way. And what that does is it tapers to this point. Then when you get to the end, you just slide your needle through the last few stitches, cinch it up, and you're done with this portion. Then we get to make our pom-pom. So go ahead and work on that, then meet me back here and I'll show you how to make the pom-pom. Okay, friends. We have what is called the touchdown pom-pom maker. We've got this. It comes in a three pack. So if anybody knows my sister-in-law, Jenny Doan, she's in there too. And then her husband, Ron, is in there. But this is me. And I will tell you that, you know, you really realize your body type when you have to stand like this for a photograph. <laughs> but anyway, to make this is what we use to make the pom-pom. And I'll show you how we do that. First off, we want to go ahead and cut a piece of yarn that's going to go from my belly on this side to my belly on that side. So we'll go ahead and cut that there. I got some painter's tape here to tape that down so it doesn't move around on me. And then I'll pull it over here, put some tape there, just like that. This will be used to cinch up the center of the pom-pom once we're done, just in case you're wondering, why are you taping string over your body? Well, that's why. Okay, so we have wrists right here. That is where we want to wrap our yarn around. And we just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. And you just continue going. And they say about 50, but I, as you can tell, like really, really fluffy pom-poms. Look at how big that pom-pom is. This is the, this size, and then this is the really big size right here. I like fluffy pom-poms, and it's for a Christmas hat, so let's make some pom-poms. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap on this one, but I've already started another one, so I'm gonna grab that so we can kinda cut to the chase here. This is the one that has my sister-in-law on it, Jenny Dunn. You can't see her face right now, but we will here in a minute. Okay, wrap that around. Now take the tape off, but keep that yarn there for a moment. Okay, see that there? Now these two sides that we taped down, we're gonna bring up and then tie in a knot. In a square knot, which is like two overhand knots. I'm not a knot expert, but I just tie it in a knot and tie it as tie it pretty tight. You may need a friend to hold it in the center. I just kind of hold it as tight as I can. And boom. Once you have those all tied together nice and secure, then you can pull them off. And hey, there's Jenny Doan. Hi. Hi. You can also, if you get bored, you, you know, hi, hi, play paper dolls like. Okay, so once you have this tie and off, I also like to go back and tie it again. Just the security of keeping all these, because you're getting ready to cut them and you want to keep all your strands of yarn together. Otherwise, your pom pom will fall apart. Okay, tie it really tight. And really tight again. And again. Okay, there we go. So it kind of looks like a little mess. We've got these loops over here. We're gonna cut all across here and then cut all across here. Now, if you've made pom-poms in the past, you know that it gets a little messy. Be prepared, have a trash can handy because the fur starts flying. As we pop this here, there we go. Make sure I got all of them cut. Now from here, it looks like, like a little, you could put some googly eyes on that and have a little pet. But I'm gonna move these because I don't want all this green yarn on my Santa hat. Okay, now comes the art part of it. And these um, patchwork scissors from Clover are fantastic for pom-poms. They are super sharp and it feels like you're cutting hair. And you want that for this project. 
you just snip, snip, snip. Ooh, you can make it look like Oscar the Grouch. Oh, there's some loops I didn't get. Now, I've seen different methods. So last year during birthday bash, we were making um, pom-poms, um, showing people how to use the pom-pom makers, the touchdown pom-pom makers. And I saw so many different methods to making pom-poms out there. So I've seen where they take one side and squish it like this and smooth it down, give it a haircut like this. Now my problem is, is I just keep going and then my big old pom-pom kind of starts shrinking. So I don't know when to stop sometimes. Oh, I kind of, that didn't, that, that didn't look too bad. I tend to kind of just, if this doesn't uh, appeal to you, we also have already made fur pom-poms that would look really cute at OneBigHappy.com. Check it out. But you'll have enough yarn in your kit to make these, so why not? Okay, so you just keep trimming. Like I said, I could go forever trimming on these. Whoopsie. Almost went too far in. I caught myself. But definitely check into the Clover Patchwork Scissors because they make this so much easier. Okay, so that's a pom-pom. Once you're done with that, then you take some extra yarn and you can sew it on the end of your hat. You have enough to make one for the Santa in white and enough to make one for the elf in green. Be prepared, it does get a little messy. Um, However, before you sew your pom-pom onto your hat, you might want to go ahead and block your hat, and that's lukewarm water with some ukulele, and then put it on the fantastic beanie blocker, let it dry, and then sew your pom-pom on there. But that is the Santa and elf hat. Isn't that cute? Look at this elf hat. Okay, I'm going to mess up my hair, but hold on. Isn't it cute? I totally love it. Check out some pictures. You'll see my kids. Garrett's got the Santa hat on. Lila's got the elf hat on. And they look so adorable. But uh, thank you for joining me for the Santa and elf hat knit along. Be sure to pick up a kit at OneBigHappy.com that has the pattern and the yarn. Check out the beanie blocker, the scissors I've talked about. But most of all, it's Christmas. Have fun. Enjoy the project. Learn a few new fun stitches. Make a few pom-poms and just enjoy the season. Thank you so much. Have a great day and happy knitting.